What's up guys, no one here. The jury is out on the current initial early access release for Grey Zone Warfare. I've now played through almost all of the content the game has to offer twice, along with over 120 hours, actually more like 130 hours in the game, to cite my experience with it. The TLDR is it's fun to a limit if your pool of games that you enjoy include Arma and Escape from Tarkov, while the problems start with the fact that lots of people can't even run the game. So my suggestion is if you are looking for a Tarkov replacement, you'll need to keep looking and be sure to let me know if you find something because I, I haven't yet. If you are just looking for a new shooter to check out and have a beefy PC and you like both Escape from Tarkov and Arma, I guarantee that you will have $35 worth of fun with this game, whether it's in the next six days, six months, or six years. The base is there and they're just going to keep building it. So again, I will be clear, as long as the game runs on your PC and the servers work, which potentially could be a tall order, but I haven't had a problem in the last two days. If you like Escape from Tarkov, of and you like Arma, that tells me enough about what you are interested in in video games to know that you will have $35 worth of fun in this game, period. That's my opinion. The shenanigans potential with a group of three to seven friends is crazy high with this as long as you can all run it, while the difficulty of progressing through the PvE is solid for the price point. So to be clear here, I'll say that you should not buy anything more than the $35 version of the game to make sure that your PC can run it, no matter how good it is, because people with beast PCs have also been having issues something with the cpu or something like that it's been running into problems a lot of people have been having problems I mean. but after that if you like tarkov and arma you will find a way to get 35 dollars worth of fun out of this game like i said i guarantee it there's enough there and that's pretty much that i'm going to continue and i'll give some more details but if that's all you're here for i'd appreciate all the support that i can get for that straightforward answer so click all the buttons in the screen think about coming by a twitch stream of mine and my patreon is linked below if you're interested there's also my other channels for other games down there thanks for the support now here's the problems that i see for the game as i know the devs watch these videos so this is mostly for them but if you guys want to give opinions on them let me know problems start with the stability it's the initial release so the servers are being tested for real for the first time but they're going to be fighting an uphill battle forever the amount of ai and entities spawned in full servers especially if everybody spread out to pretty much all of the POIs around the map must be chaotic as some of these locations will spawn dozens of AI at once and their bodies stay for quite some time. This is something that will be worked on over time, but it's gonna go through waves of good and bad through the development. Next problem is the AI are frustrating and not in a good way. They have all the earmarks of normal AI for games like this, where they can at random go from pushovers to terminators that see through bushes and shoot through walls. In a game with such little PVP potential, it becomes very annoying and makes you not interested in continuing, especially when the risk to reward or the understanding of what's on the other side of this task is just blank there. There really isn't anything. We put up with this with Tarkov because we know what we're getting to. We know we're going to get some cool stuff with these traders. We know we're going to be able to get some cool unlocks from these tasks that we finish. It's just a better established risk to reward. So I'm not sure what else can change here for the AI behavior as there's only so much that you can have them do, but stopping them from spawning in walls and then also seeing perfectly through bushes is a good start however that's something other games have struggled with for years i'll put it I'll make that clear there the seeing through bush thing was not a problem on the initial test though so something reverted or something regressed there so i know that you guys can go back to that meanwhile there's players that struggle with the ai as is so if they turn up the difficulty too high for the chad gamers you turn away the normies it's a tough spot to be in however even with the terminators and x-ray vision i can single-handedly farm the toughest locations on the map which also doesn't seem right it's, again tough situation so problem the loot sucks is the next problem you don't care to bring anything back with you because it doesn't sell for literally anything and the ease at which you get your gear back when you die makes you not really care about it in the first place and this is again coming from somebody that has thousands of hours in games like these maybe it's different from newer players i don't know i can only speak to my experience and my experience is the risk to reward is practically non-existent which might not matter to the devs but i think it's very, I, I was going to say very important. I, in fact, I think it's vital to a game like this. Then the next problem is reason to play because once I complete tasks and when the loot sucks, I have no reason to go back to a location that I finished the tasks for. That leads me to my last problem, which is the severe lack of PVP for degenerate gamers like myself and the monumental size of snowball advantages. Again, it's possible the devs really don't care about this, but I think you guys really should, or I think they should, and I'll explain why. No matter 
how little your value is for certain aspects of gameplay or how little you focus on it, there's still going to be loads of players who dedicate their time to it. So you need to think about the effects of that, basically. Because as long as there's PvP VE servers, where it's going to be both, there's going to be people that go there strictly to PvP. I would imagine quite a few people. So if it's something that you would leave glaring problems like this up, just remove the PvP, to be honest. It's just weird. Especially when it is something as important as PvP. The people straight up want that. They need that in their games. And I'm one of those people. So initial problem is in the snowball and path through the progression that is exclusive to this game because of the way that they've chosen to do this. When players start from hour one and then play for several hours a day, each day, like streamers do, or maybe they're just, maybe it's summer vacation or something, or maybe you have a week off from work. Maybe you take time off for the wipe, like everybody does with Tarkov. Not everybody, but you know what I mean. They, those zones have very little chance of containing enemy players when they progress so quickly. I know for a fact that's the case. So they just continue to blow through the AI and keep progressing and never look back. The way that Tarkov fixes this is you're constantly going back to the same locations as a side note there. So when people do happen to snowball like that and they do happen to get PvP, they're fighting much lower ranked players for no rewards. So it doesn't make them want to continue playing. Why are you playing at that point? And I've reached that stage. I don't know. There's nothing else that is interesting to me with the gameplay here, but I have to be clear that's after 130 hours. I would say 90 of it. I absolutely loved. Then when it wipes, I would say 10 to 15 also absolutely loved with a fresh wipe. So it's there. That's, that's more than $35 worth of enjoyment right there in its current stage. And I don't need to pay anything else to get everything else they have planned down the road. As long as we don't have another BSG situation on our hands, but we'll see. So hopefully I'm making sense when I say this here, but the problem is your most dedicated players burn themselves out much too quickly with no dedicated or trustworthy access to new or evolving engaging gameplay. I think they need to prioritize the point of interest timed events because they don't need to add anything new to those locations. They just need to say, hey, go fight over this and you get this if you win. Content wise, it's very slim. Now getting it to work and getting the AI to adjust and things like that. I know it's not a, it's, it's not a small amount of work. It's not nothing, but it's better than, you know, adding more points of interest, moving the points of interest, changing up all the tasks, changing up the economy. There's going to be a couple other things I suggest here too, but that would be the, a major for the PVP side of things, adding or prioritizing the point of interest fights would be huge. Really going to throw a wrench into things and gets people going. Right now, if I'm bored of the story because it gives me no rewards I care about, and, and in fact, some of it is completely useless to me. I'm able to straight up buy three plus and it's still giving me three, which doesn't make any sense. So if I, if I did want to do it, I would just go shoot the same AI in the same location until one gets the RNG right and headshots me through a bush that I can't see through, or I just blow through them and I get everything done and it's just, I move on to the next, it's, it's boring. And the things and the fail points, the things that make it not work out is so frustrating. It makes you not want to play and is successful. I've stopped now. And in case you forgot from earlier, that can happen with other games, but the value that you get for pushing through it is very well established and understood. Here, it's just, we know it's the same. There is no reason to fight through that. So on the PvP side of things, you fix the bases, so that's good. And the LZs are better, but far from done. Perfect example was I was literally 30 seconds from getting on to my chopper to head back to base the other day when enemies landed right in front of me on the LZ that I was literally 30 seconds away from getting on the chopper and walked right over me because they were invincible. So I decided not to shoot them and just let them pass, but they just walked right into me. I couldn't kill them because of the immunity and I had no choice but to just die. I, I could literally hear my chopper landing on the LZ while I was in a coma right as that fight ended. Seconds, just seconds. I had no choice but to be in that location and it still fucked me. That's ridiculous. The LZs are still very stupid in that regard. So I'm done with gray zone for now after almost 40 hours played this wipe and 90 hours played the wipe before when PVP was plentiful. That's just the kind of player I am. And I called it perfectly during the first test. Eventually you will get to know the AI and it will become a chore to fight them. But players are always unpredictable and it adds a lot to the game. I don't see anything wrong with improving the PVP for PVP servers. Personally, I understand it's not a PVP game. I understand it's not the focus, but there's just a few things you need to tune and it'll be fine. The point of interest fights will be the the first step and the camps will be an interesting bonus in terms of being helpful. The next will be shaping the economy to make looting more beneficial, then add or change quests to include previous points of interest. Nothing insane in terms of content. In fact, you probably already have some of this stuff in the works and that could easily double or triple the amount of time I've put in the game.
But for now, I'm done with Gray Zone. But the basis is there is some cool gameplay down the line. So that's what I meant earlier when I was saying whether it takes six days, six months, or more for that $35 worth of fun to kick in, it will kick in for you at some point. And that is as long as the servers work and your PC can run it. It will be cool eventually into the, the hundreds of hours. But right now, the lifespan for a player like me with the experience that I have in games like Arma and Escape from Tarkov and more, the fun stops at around 130 hours. And that's with a wipe in the middle. And also the first test, the first 90 hours I had, had significant PvP. I will say though, if a buddy said they needed help questing and I had nothing better to do, I'd probably jump back in. Playing, being able to play with your friends as long as you're on the right faction, which is a whole other problem, is pretty cool. It's it's a nice setup to have there. It's like Tarkov in that respect. It's nice to have your friends there with you. Let me know what you guys think, but that's going to do it for my thoughts on Gray Zone. We'll see if this video does well. I'll post some other stuff here and there, but I think we're pretty hard established right now. And now we got to wait for them to make some changes to the servers or really update the servers, fix the servers some more stability stuff. We'll see when they end up actually getting some real content out down the line. Thanks to the Patreons and members for supporting me. You guys can catch unique content over there from daily updates to future plans and exclusive extra content. Link below if you are interested. You can also come by a stream over on Twitch or check out my other channels for other games like Star Citizen, Broken Arrow, and Asher Creation right here. For the minute by minute stuff, make sure to follow me on Twitter or join the Discord, both linked below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a nice day. See you guys.